and this, this morning. morning. I want, I want to, to uh, particularly, particularly welcome any visitors who might be with us today. today. I know I we're know very we're excited, excited that our good that our friend, friend Deb is here with us in the sanctuary today. today. So, so thank, thank you for you being for here. here. For those for of you who are in the sanctuary, sanctuary remember, remember masks on, on maintain, maintain distance, distance, and refrain and from, from singing, singing aloud, as sad as that is. When it's time to pass the peace, we will all do so with jazz hands. And if and those of you who are in the sanctuary, sanctuary want to turn at that time to the, to the back, back of the sanctuary, sanctuary and look at the camera, camera you can pass the piece to everybody who is online. I am grateful, grateful as always, always for those who join me in worship leadership, leadership as we continue to talk about the church at work. work. Uh, Caroline uh, is here with me as worship leader. DR and Patrick and Denise are back in the AV Center and Charlotte is, has been ushering. Um, so, well, uh, thanks to all of them. Now, for the last couple of weeks, our theme, The Church at Work, has been about how we moved to that online format when the COVID pandemic required it. And then last week, how we moved to this new hybrid format. Today, we remember that the Church at Work praises God and celebrates God's gifts, especially the diversity of God's people. As we listen to the prelude, please, if you are online, put any prayer requests you have in the chat. And now I invite you to center yourselves and prepare for worship. Good morning, and thanks, Em, for that beautiful uh, prelude to our worship service today. I'd like to call your attention uh, to the meditation today, if you would follow along with me. We should indeed keep calm in the face of difference and live our lives in a state of inclusion and wonder at the diversity of humanity. Amen. And now I would like to invite you all to um, pass the peace with one another. And those of you online will do that um, just online. But everybody in the sanctuary, I'd like you to stand up 
and I'd like for us to wish each other the peace of Christ with our jazz hands. And people in the sanctuary, turn around so you can look at the camera and folks out there online can see who we are, who we're here. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. I think also today, if you would make a commitment to call somebody you haven't talked to recently, uh, to wish them the peace of Christ, that would be a super way to connect with each other across this bridge of space and um, technology that we're experiencing right now. And now I'd like to turn to the call to worship. This is adapted from Psalm 146. So if you will join me in this reading, um, Katie will join us too. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will sing praises to God all my life long. Do not put your trust in mortals, but in God. For our hope is in God, who made heaven and earth and all things. The Lord keeps faith with us always. God works for justice, feeds the hungry, frees us from captivity, and lifts us up. God opens our eyes to truth and watches for, for those who are marginalized. God loves us, all of us. Let us worship God. remember that before we confess, and no matter what we confess to God, we can be assured of God's love and mercy. So hear the good news. We are wonderfully made in God's image. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Believe this good news and give thanks. In Jesus the Christ, we are forgiven. So now trusting in God's love for us, we confess our sins and seek reconciliation. Holy God of diverse creation, we confess our failure to be what you created us to be and our failure to love others for whom you created them to be. You alone know our struggles to love those who are different from us, those whose difference challenges us. <coughs> we confess 
that we wander from your commandment to love others as you love us, that we forget just how big your love is. Help us, we pray, to live in your light and abide in your ways. Amen. Please join me with the, it, in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, open our ears to your words and our minds to your ways. Show us what new things you have created in this world for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis 1 26. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Psalm 139, 13 to 14. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. Colossians 3, 9 through 11. You have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Jew and Greek, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 16. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. Acts 10, 34 and 35, and 44 through 47. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Thanks be to God for the word this morning. Made in the image of God, made fearfully and wonderfully, made anew in Christ so that there is no distinction or division among us, made to be one body, undeniably a part of each other all over the world, no matter how different, made to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit. That is humankind. That is all of us. Nowhere is there an, well, except you, 
you weren't made in God's image, or except if you happen to be the body's appendix, we don't need you. We are, all of us, made to be loved, respected, and celebrated. And that is really what I want to say today. I want us to celebrate all of humankind made in God's image. Why is it so important to celebrate people, that is, all people, rather than the person who's having a birthday or who has accomplished something special? Well, because we forget to do it. Pride Month, the month of June, when we are called to celebrate especially the queer community, reminds us that we often don't celebrate our differences, but instead use them to divide us, to privilege some, and to marginalize others. It's an ages-old human story. In Jesus' time, the in-the-news divisions, if you will, seemed to be Greeks or Gentiles versus Jews, slave versus free, male versus female, nation versus nation. But the writers of the epistles tell us very clearly that, well, those divisions are poppycock. In Christ, there is no distinction among people. All are created equally in the image of God, who, by the way, has quite a fondness for wild diversity. According to a 2011 BBC News release, scientists estimate that there are about 8.7 million different animal species on the Earth, although only about 1.2 million as of 2011 had been formally described. Others estimate there may be as many as 30 million different species. My point is, God did not create a world of sameness, did not create a world where there are people who are all the same and only a few different animals live in a single kind of environment. No. God created an immense variety of landscapes from humid jungle to arid desert and an overwhelming number of species from the gnat to the blue whale. Why should it be any different with humans? Why do we feel a need to determine that some of us are better because of our skin color or gender or sexual orientation or able-bodiedness? I've long been puzzled by the fact that people born physically or mentally different, for example, someone born missing a limb, or someone born with Down syndrome are labeled special in some communities, while people born with a sexual orientation that is anything other than heterosexual are sometimes labeled deviant. Didn't, create, didn't God create us all equally in God's image? I'm grateful that Pride Month gives us a chance to acknowledge both our diversity and our similarity as God's beloved children. But we humans really like to divide ourselves. And of course, our divisions lead to great turmoil, as divisions always have. They lead to some being privileged and others being marginalized. They lead to schisms in faith communities. One of the biggest in-the-news divisions in faith communities in my time of ministry has centered on the straight versus gay dichotomy as if gender and sexual orientation were a single dichotomy. But we know, as the growing number of letters in the LGBTQIA plus acronym attests, that gender and sexual orientation are not so simple. Yet people in faith traditions have focused on a few ambiguous verses of scripture to grow this division, throwing out of the window the oneness underscored in the passages we read today and the overarching biblical message that we are made to love one another, to welcome and respect one another 
across differences. You've no doubt heard Leviticus 18.22, which calls it an abomination for a man to lie with a male as with a woman. This is one of the anti-gay clobber texts in scripture. In one Bible translation, this verse is actually followed by the sentence that appears nowhere in the Hebrew, homosexuality is wrong. But how could that sentence appear in scripture? The word homosexuality was not coined until the mid 1800s. But the verse probably refers instead to incest with a male relative given that it's in the middle of a long list of prohibitions against incest. The English translation we usually see doesn't pay very close attention to the Hebrew construction. Besides, we don't seem concerned about other prohibitions in this lengthy Levitical code, prohibition of tattoos, or wearing clothes made of two different fabrics. Is anybody here today wearing a co cotton poly blend shirt? I imagine many of you are. Indeed, in Christ, the law is that of love, not that of Leviticus. Of course, there are also verses in the New Testament that have been understood to condemn homosexuality. We have become so used to traditional understandings of what these verses mean as they have been translated that we don't look closely into the fact that the Greek word often translated homosexuals in 1 Corinthians 6 is a compound word coined by Paul from the words male and bed. Many scholars contend that a close look at the Greek in the context of this translation actually points in, God's, in, in Paul's list of unrighteous people to the context of prostitution and pederasty, which is the, under, the practice of older men taking younger boys as sexual partners, more than it does any sort of generalized understanding of homosexuality, which remember is a word not even in use until the 1860s. Now, I could continue with these scholarly tidbits about those Bible verses used as clobber text against the queer community, but really, why? Not one of these few verses erases the global biblical message that all people were created by a loving God, that we are part of one body and each of us is important to the well-being and function of that body that in Christ there is no Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free, black, white or brown, gay, straight, trans or bi. We are together God's people. Trappist monk, author and mystic Thomas Merton, whose name many of you probably know, once had a mystic vision while he was running errands in downtown Louisville Kentucky. He wrote of that vision. In Louisville, at the corner of Fourth and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all those people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness. This sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. I have the immense joy of being human a member of a race in which God himself became incarnate. As if the sorrows and stupidities of the human condition could overwhelm me, now I realize what we all are. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people that they are all walking around, shining like 
the Son. Today, as we focus specifically on celebrating the diversity of being made in God's image, we have an opportunity to proclaim our commitment to honoring that diversity. I invite you to join me in a litany that celebrates the diversity found in the body of Christ. Now, I adapted this litany from one written for a 2015 meeting of the Colorado Nevada Conference of the United Methodist Church, a denomination that ironically and sadly is currently considering a split over issues of gay ordination and same-sex marriage. May this litany be a prayer for and a commitment to a diverse body of Christ. You'll find this litany only on your screen. So please join me by reading the words in yellow. Our God calls us to believe that all people are human equal in the sight of eternity and wonderfully created to be diverse and beloved children of God. We all inhabit our God-given bodies fully. We are all fed by the blood that courses through us and by love and food and water. We all celebrate and mourn, rejoice and grieve. We search for a new way of being. We have been created with dignity. We have been created in love. We respond to the call to be who we truly are, who we were meant to be in community and in diversity. We commit to being in loving conversation with those whose difference challenges us. Together, we are the body of Christ, the people of God. We seek to love one another as God loves us. Amen. Amen. to thank everyone for your continued support of First United Meth uh, President, <laughs> I'm still a Methodist, oh dear. <laughs> Rod Billingsley would be right at me, wouldn't he? We want to thank you for your continued support of First, Presbyterian, First United Presbyterian Church. Uh, for those of you who contribute online or by check through the mail, uh, and for those of you who are here in the sanctuary today, there is an offering plate at the back if you would uh, care to leave an offering there. Um, but we do con uh, are so grateful for the continued support of everyone as the work of this church does move on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures hear me.
Let us pray. God of all creation, who calls us to love your people, we give you thanks for relationship and for the beautiful diversity of people with whom to interact. As we remember that your spirit fills us and empowers us, we confidently bring our prayers to you, knowing that you listen, that you both celebrate and hurt with us, and that always you love us. We give thanks for families and friends and for relationship with your people. Remind us to celebrate the diversity of your people and to open ourselves to them. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We celebrate along with those who have birthdays, anniversaries, and good news today. We especially celebrate Rudy Lumbach and Bonnie Trujillo, who have birthdays this week, and Bonnie and Art Trujillo, whose 62nd anniversary is today. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We pray for Julie Franken and celebrate her promotion to captain in the Air Force. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We celebrate Gianna and Robert. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We celebrate the marriage of Mark and Lisa, our friend Deb's son and daughter-in-law, and ask that you pour blessings on them. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We give thanks today for Lorenzo and all he does for many of our church family members. Lord, with joy, hear our prayer. We pray for Jackson Awuzing, who is visiting his father, who is ill. We know that Cameroon is unstable right now and ask for Jackson's safety and for your comfort for his family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We cry with those grieving the loss of friends and loved ones, O oh God, remembering especially those who have lost loved ones to COVID and the family of Joseph Ryder who passed away suddenly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us care for those who are ill, those who are recovering from illness, and those who are facing medical procedures. We remember Michelle Ulivari and her family as they tend to her mother, Lucille, who is in hospice care. We ask continued healing for Chad Bullock, for Elisa, for Diane, for Angela, for Clara, and Steve. We pray for those facing cancer and remember Paul as he continues chemo tra treatment and Pam's goddaughter as she begins cancer treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those suffering with COVID. We ask that you help us support those who suffer from mental illness. We understand that illness and medical procedures affect not only the patient, but their loved ones. And so we hold them close to our hearts as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask also safe travel for Chris and Laura. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we ask that we remember those who are hungry and homeless, that they know your presence and that we give as generously as we can to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask that you bless our local and national leaders with compassion, wisdom, and a passion for truth and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all the nations of the world that we might recognize your beloved people in each other. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, we come to you asking what you require of us. You replied to do justice, 
and to love kindness and to walk humbly with you, our God. We ask you today to be with our Congress people as they struggle with voting rights bills and think ahead to immigration reform. Instill in their hearts a will to do justice. Lord, in your mercy. Be with the Israelites and the Palestinians as they work to form a new governing body. Be with all of those in that area who have suffered so much for so long. Help all of them to walk humbly with you. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and strengthen those who on our southern board border, especially those who have no safe place to go. We give thanks to Principe de Paz, our Prieta, Cristo Rey, and more for their tireless work for the immigration people. Give those in positions of power a love for kindness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the welfare of Manal School. May it can continue to be a shining light in the education field. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, O oh God, we pray for those concerns that remain deep in our hearts rather than spoken aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting in your guiding spirit, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to turn to some opportunities that are um, in our church, some that you have uh, responded to and some others that you need to know about. Um, first of all, we want to thank everyone for the generous contributions to the uh, PCUSA Pentecost offering, which was held earlier um, in June. That offering raised $640, and you may remember that 40% of that offering uh, stays right here in Las Vegas, and that will be $256. And that will be used for some project relating to youth at risk. So the peacemaking uh, committee, Mission and Peacemaking, will be making decisions about how that $256 will be used. And uh, that committee is very grateful for any ideas that you might have uh, to assist youth at risk. So if you have an idea, please feel free to contact Carol Litherland, who is the Mission and Peacemaking Chair. Remember that our COVID precautions to help everybody stay safe and feel safe are still important. If you'd like to join us in the sanctuary next week on June 20th, please contact the office or by calling or emailing that you would like to be here in person. Uh, we need to have that information by Thursday noon, please. And since we probably won't have Perea Hall equipped yet for overflow by then, uh, we'll only be able to seat the first 25 family units who reserve a space. God has made us for relationship, and if you'd like an opportunity to chat with Pastor Katie this week uh, and others, you might plan to join Coffee uh, with Katie on Tuesday morning via Zoom. That's at 9 o'clock. You're also invited, if you wish, to join the adult 
Sunday school class on Sunday morning, which is now convening at 9 a.m. on Zoom, Zoom, and has just begun discussion of the book, The Hope of Glory, Reflections on the Last Words of Jesus from the Cross. This is by uh, award-winning author and historian John Meacham. If you're interested in more information about it, contact Richard Lindeborg. And now let us joyfully celebrate God's invitation indeed, God's commandment for us to go out and love one another during our closing hymn. I know that probably in some ways today I was preaching to the choir. This is a wonderfully inclusive and welcoming community. But we forget sometimes to look at each other and see that we are all shining like the sun. So take just a couple of seconds and look at, at each other, whether you're on Zoom or whether you're here in the sanctuary. You might see some people gathered around you who you sometimes get annoyed with. You might see some people who you don't know well. But take a look right now and see we are all shining like the sun. I have heard this week that many people are enjoying their spirit boxes. For those of you in the sanctuary, mine is right down here. Um, in which we're putting those things that remind us of the Spirit's presence in our lives. 
Last week, I asked you to include something in your spirit box that represented a change you are being called to make or a change that you've, a call to change that you've responded to. Now, I wanted very much to put all of you in my spirit box this week, but you wouldn't fit. So instead, I put in a little note card that has a drawing on, of the church on the front to remind me that coming to First United Presbyterian Church more than five years ago now was a call to a huge change in my life and in DR's life as well that after five years still brings me immense joy and challenge. And so thank you all for that. <laughs> this coming week, I invite you to include in your spirit box something that reminds you of an encounter you've had with someone who is different from you in some way, someone from whom you gained new insight, understanding, or friendship that might have been unexpected. And during this Pride Month, I encourage you to consider the ways in which someone in the queer community, or many people in the queer community, have enriched your life. And now, as we leave this place of worship, may you go with the love of our amazing Creator God. May you go with the grace of Jesus, the Christ who came to teach us how to live together and how to love one another. And may you go with the Spirit who walks with you always. And all of God's people say together, Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>